Hello everyone, Anthony here. Uh, if my mouth gets uh, progressively more red through this video, uh, cranberry juice, good stuff. Uh, so in this video, I wanna give an update on uh, Rayshard Brooks and what's going on with him and uh, all the new stuff. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is uh, his criminal record was deleted. So what I was showing you guys in my previous uh, video of him having 23 convictions of like theft and weapons charges and drug charges and uh, the important stuff like the family violence and brutality or, or cruelty to children or uh, whatever those charges were. Uh, it's all deleted from the Clayton County uh, record. So I'm just gonna look it up right now and, and show you. So if we search all courts for uh, Rayshard Brooks, uh, submit search, and yeah, we don't have, uh, his name was the top of, of this entire list, uh, 23 of them. And yeah, completely deleted. So what that tells me, and obviously like there's a big problem with that, with it's pretty much deleting evidence or deleting like, uh, deleting information that can lead or persuade a, a like factual information that can persuade the outcome of a court case. Uh, but I think it shows like them trying to control the narrative because once everyone saw his criminal record and everything, uh, everyone's like, oh, why are you trying to portray this guy as a family man and, and uh, how he's trying to do good for his kids and everything like that when his criminal record and, and the fact that he was drinking that night at his child's birthday, uh, which, I'm not even sure if he was actually at his child's birthday uh, because of this Natalie White thing that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but yeah, someone has to be charged or something with like tampering evidence or, or deleting public records that has to be some type of charge. So the next thing to talk about, there's this interview video that was released uh, a few days ago by a place called Reconnect uh, Inc. And you can look at uh, their YouTube channel. You can look up their YouTube channel and apparently what this place is, what the purpose is, is trying to reconnect inmates to the outside world and uh, reconnect them and re-socialize them or at least talk about their experiences to further the agenda of trying to help inmates by listening to inmates' experiences or whatever. And, uh, so they did an interview of Rayshard four months ago, I think. And on their website, they said, oh, this is just a quick edit that we put together. It's eight minutes and 43 seconds of footage. They're like, oh, this is just a quick edit of what we put together. We have a ton more footage, but it, but we're not releasing it yet. And this is another thing, uh, trying to portray Rayshard in a new light, uh, or not in a new light, but in a good light. Uh, because he's saying like how he's like the victim of the system and and how uh, pr uh, the government wants prisoners because uh, uh, because prisons make money off of uh, pr or prisons make money off of prisoners, which isn't true at all because it costs money. Like all right, so there's public prisons and private prisons. Uh, private prisons do make money off of uh, off of inmates because. Uh, so there's public prisons and say that it costs the government $200 per day to store to keep one inmate. Well, then these private prisons come along and they're like, all right, we can have, uh, we can make everything more efficient and make everything cheaper to run. So now it only costs say $150 uh, per prisoner. So now the, yeah, the more prisoners that they have, the more money that they make. The thing is though, that's private prisons aren't a big thing in this country at all. In 2019, only 8.2% of all inmates were in uh, private prisons. And the way that uh, public prisons make money is that taxpayers pay for public prisons. So it's not like, uh, so it's not like prisoners are making money. In order to make money, you generate value. Prisoners do not generate any value for prisons i can see like oh maybe like uh, a prison 
wants to have more inmates because then they can get more government funding like a public prison. I can see maybe that's the case, but prisons have no influence on arresting people at all. That's up to uh, cops, that's up to court, that's up to the legal system. Prisons don't have any influence in, uh, in arresting people and putting people in jail. Uh, so I don't know why he was saying that, but he was also saying that uh, he needs help and he wishes that he had like a mentor or a supervisor or a babysitter uh, to babysit him once he got out of prison uh, to help him find the way back on onto uh, the uh, back into normal life and everything like that. And he's saying like stuff like that doesn't exist. But there definitely is probation and parole and halfway houses and other support groups to help you readjust after you get out of prison and all that. Uh, with him saying that in this interview, it just seems to me like he's openly saying that uh, he can't take care of himself and, and he's not fit for society because he can't take care of himself and needs someone else to take care of him, which like, I don't see why that should be socialized like... Uh, and, and the truth is, is that it is these social services are socialized at, that taxpayers pay for these, uh, these, these charities pretty much to, to get prisoners back into the workforce and back into, uh, their own lives, back into lives and everything. But it's a terribly inefficient and non-working system because just like raising children, no one is going to care for a child more than their own parents, more than their own family. That's just how it works, uh, which I know isn't like an actual reason or whatever, but no one, no one, no one gives a shit about you other than your own family. Uh, so in order to have an efficient system doing this, uh, Rayshard should have like his girlfriend or his, or his uh, wife. Uh, apparently he had both. Uh, is what it seems like. Uh, your family and people that, and your friends and stuff, people who you're in the life of uh, are gonna be the best at taking care of you and the best at uh, readapting you to, uh, to society afterwards because they're the ones who most benefit from it. Uh, so say that you're getting out of jail and, uh, and you have a wife, well, your wife is gonna benefit most from getting you back into the uh into workforce and everything because then that's more in income for her uh you get to stay out of jail and get to build a new life by staying out of jail uh, so then the kids have you in her life uh, in their life and and all that and and they get to grow up with a dad and everything so so the family and say that's friends friends if they help you uh have a stable and normal life and everything, then those friends get to have you in their life as a friend and companion and, and everything like that. So these social systems, they don't have an incentive to, to put you into the workforce and make sure that uh, you're rehabilitated and, and everything like that because they don't give a shit. There's no benefit to them. They make their money uh, paid for in taxpayer dollars. They make their money no matter what, if you do good or do bad, uh, I would say it's probably in the better interest for them to not uh, rehabilitate you and give you a fair shot because then that guarantees you going back into prison or doing something screwed up and then they have more people coming into them. Uh, so it's kind of job security in a way that uh, that social workers social workers don't really want to. I, I talked about this with my therapist like many months ago, like technically, why would it be in my therapist's best interest to rehabilitate me and make sure that I don't need therapy? And uh, I guess that just comes with like the moral ethical obligation uh, and me trusting him and everything. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it just doesn't make sense to do that sort of stuff. But with family, it's, and if you have good family, uh, your family would do a much better job at that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that interview video. Uh, oh yeah, you can see the other thing I wanted to point out about it. Uh, 
So right now it has uh, 10,000, almost 11,000 views, and uh, there are 14 comments on it. So uh, 15 comments on it. What type of video do you think gets 11,000 views and 15 comments? Uh, yeah, that's not the type of uh, viewer, that's not the type of comment ratio that uh, that videos get. Uh, so, and I know personally, I put my own comment on there uh, and it was deleted uh, by the mods or by the channel owner. So there's definitely, uh, there's definitely comment manipulation here because all these are trying to give sympathy for Rayshard and all that. So that just makes me think like even more that the video was like put out to portray Rayshard in a, in a good light. So, and, and from what I see, it's sad the video does get public perception uh, on Rayshard's side for like the sympathy reason uh, more than that. But you have to, a lot of times in life, to get the best uh, the best outcome uh, for yourself and for the world, you have to ignore feelings and uh, actually pay attention to facts and, and what's good for the world and everything. So next, the other thing I want to talk about. So there's a newly appointed police chief uh, for Atlanta or, or, or the county. I'm not sure if it's for all of Atlanta or for the, the county. I think it's for all of Atlanta, actually. And uh, what happened was the previous police chief, Erica Shields, Erica Fields, one of those, she resigned like immediately as soon as Ray Shard was shot. Uh, she resigned like that day. Uh, and I haven't seen like her talk about or give any explanation on it or, or anything like that. So there's this new police chief uh, involved. And I'm going to show you like uh, his any interview, uh, his press conference from that, uh, and this video is available on the 11 Alive website. And what I found interesting about that, or what I want to mention about that, is that uh, there was a guy arguing with me on Twitter when uh, the cops had charges pressed against them, charges filed against them. Uh, this guy gets back to me on Twitter, who I was arguing with, like, previously he's like see uh charges were filed against uh the cops all law enforcement disagrees with you and agrees that the cops need to be charged and i'm like all law enforcement why are you putting a blank blanket statement over and saying all law enforcement disagrees with me so that's what i thought like this uh interview video or the press conference with the police chief and the police chief saying that he doesn't agree with the da and they're not on good terms or a good relationship or anything like that uh just prove my point even further that yeah you can't put blanket statements and say all law enforcement disagrees with me and all law, law enforcement thinks the cop should be charged and and all that uh i'll show you the part of the video and and uh, you can go look at it for yourself. All right, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick up the person asking the questions uh, question, but she says uh, the GBI, so the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the APD, the Atlanta Police Department, weren't aware of charges gonna be filed against the two cops before the charges were filed. Was he aware, was the police department aware of the charges? So I'm gonna let you guys listen to that. The GBI, I believe, is mentioned that they were not aware that charges were coming for, for the officer involved in the Wendy situation. Did, did the APD, were you aware that charges were coming from the Fulton Department? So what happened is uh, I got a call right before the press conference itself saying that charges were being brought. Uh, so no, I, I was so, I was as shocked uh, in, in our administrative process, unless we, uh, recognize immediately that there's something uh before we call it that's what we call the gbi to investigate this and we follow their lead uh so i i, I was surprised that the da would get to that conclusion that fast how would you say the relationship with the fulton county da's office and the how would you say the relationship is um i mean we have to work with two organizations two pieces of government that have to work together good Bad. You have to work together. We have to work together. All right. So she said, uh, how's your relationship with uh, the DA? And uh, he's like, we have to work together. And she's like, well, is your relationship good or bad? And he's like, we have to work together. 
So yeah, the police department doesn't agree with uh, what's going on with that and everything and how the cops are charged for all this ridiculous shit, 11 charges and whatever. So this uh, police chief, like he's 100% on the side of the law and not even just the side of the law, he's on the side of due process. And the fact that all these charges were uh, were brought onto the cops before an investigation in order to file charges against someone, you have to have an investigation and a reason to uh, file charges. And uh, none of that was done at all. Uh, so, so he's on the side of due process and, and the law. And also he's on the side of the police because he's the police chief now. And when you're a manager running the police or running a group and leading, you have to be you have to back the people that you're leading. Uh, so, and it's even better when you're backing the people that you're leading. It's even better when you're doing so honestly and with good cause and morally and truthfully and, and all that. Uh, that makes you an, an even stronger uh, leader uh, instead of just leading by manipulation and, and all that. So there's another guy, something Collins, let me look up his name, Doug Collins, who's the uh, Georgia, a Georgia U.S. representative, mm -hmm. representative. Uh, let me look at that real quick to see exactly who he is. So Doug Collins is the uh, U.S. representative for Georgia's ninth congressional district since 2013. And he has uh, an entire video on 11 Alive uh, asking for the DA to resign and saying that it's like, unconstitutional or whatever to uh to file these charges and and corrupt of what the DA is doing and all that so that's this guy and so there's uh there's definitely more uh more people on the side of the cops and i'm not even i don't even want to say side of the cops but the side of truth and justice and and the legal system and all that the last thing i want to talk about is this woman so her name is uh, we have a in time. her her name is uh, Natalie White, and you saw uh, you saw she's the one who uh, she's one of the suspects who was uh, being sought after for who uh, helped start the fire at Wendy's. And the reason that she's important uh, is everyone was saying like, oh, see, it was a white girl who started the fire at Wendy's. It was a white girl who did this and blah, blah, blah. Like, see, black people don't don't cause trouble. Black people are peaceful and, and all that. Uh, so it turns out this girl's name is Natalie White. And uh, what's interesting is in the body cam footage from Ray Shard's, uh, from Ray Shard getting arrested and killed and all that, Rayshard mentions a Natalie White in uh, mentions a Natalie White while he's uh, being interviewed by the cops. So I'm going to show you that uh, real quick too. Atlanta Fire and Rescue has named a woman they believe helped set the fire at the Wendy's in Southeast Atlanta a week ago today. An arrest warrant has been issued for this woman, 29 year old Natalie White. They say she is one of the suspects accused of setting the Wendy's on University Avenue on fire. Now, that is not the first time we've heard the name Natalie White. We also heard it on the body cam video showing the interaction between Rayshard Brooks and police. About 20 minutes into the conversation, Mr. Brooks says her name. I just wanted me a burger. So, but, but no margaritas at all today? No, no, just a daiquiri. Just a daiquiri? Yes. All right. And, Natalie White. Right. And you, and you, didn't, and you, and you, haven't, you haven't drove your vehicle at all? Now we've reached out to Brooks's family attorney and Atlanta Fire and Rescue to confirm if these are the same women, but we have not heard back. Yeah, so there's this Natalie White that he mentioned that he was with before before this. And was he drinking with her before this? I have to look through the police footage, the body cam footage all over again to see, uh, to make more sense of this. But again, to say that Rayshard was a good family man and everything like that when he was hanging out with this other girl, uh, drinking with her and everything like that. Uh, there, there was, uh, so I can't confirm this yet, but there's people saying that in the police body cam footage, uh, Rayshard says that Natalie White is his girlfriend. Uh, so him having a girlfriend and having a wife at the same time uh, just doesn't, 
really add up to people claiming that he's a good family man and and all this uh yeah you don't have a wife and a girlfriend if you're a good family man but it's also it's also very interesting uh when you see Rayshard's wife talking and this is another thing i want to look at and look more into with the new knowledge that i have to see uh her wife his uh his wife going hard on on all these press conferences saying like how he's a good father and good man or or whatever and and taking Rayshard's side and fighting all this she's gonna get a shit ton of money out of this and i think that's probably why uh she's fighting so hard for it and this is why you can't pay you can't pay out on these cases when there was no injustice or anything that happened uh, I don't see like any civil rights problems or anything with what happened, uh, but everyone always gets paid out and, and people see like this pot of gold uh, with fighting these cases. And sometimes you go like super hard at it and do these legal battles for like five, 10 years. And eventually like the city and the government just gives up because like they just want to get rid of you and, and they pay out on it. Uh, you can't you can't pay out on that if, if they it's like apologizing for something you didn't do wrong uh but all this stuff is just gonna perpetuate if you keep doing that like this racism stuff this racism stuff is subsidized uh in that uh in that you're paying people to claim racism when when there's no racism or, or anything like that so you're giving incentive for people to claim racism and provoke racism and all that and and uh that's not right at all so that's it for this video uh i'm gonna look at this other stuff that i said and give an update video on it but uh take care guys thank you and goodbye mm -hmm.